Sunscreens are intended to prevent further facial photoaging, but can't dramatically reverse damage presently visible, whereas topical retinoids are the most important drug class to reverse the signs of aging. Ever dream of radiant, youthful skin without resorting to expensive creams or procedures? In this video, we'll be joining Dr. Michael Greger, a world-renowned physician and author of How Not to Die, to explore the power of vitamins and C for achieving a healthy, age-defying glow. Dr. Greger is a champion for harnessing the power of food as medicine. Today, we'll be diving deep into the science behind these two essential vitamins, revealing their incredible potential for skin repair and anti-aging. Get ready to learn how vitamin A, in its various forms like retinol A, can help combat wrinkles and sun damage. Dr. Greger will explain how this vitamin works on a cellular level to promote skin cell turnover, potentially leading to a smoother, more youthful appearance. But it doesn't stop there. Dr. Greger will also unveil the impressive world of vitamin C, including ascorbic acid. Learn how this potent antioxidant can protect your skin from free radical damage, a major contributor to wrinkles and age spots. We'll explore the science behind how vitamin C can potentially boost collagen production, the building block of youthful skin. Dr. Greger will also discuss the best dietary sources of vitamins A and C, empowering you to create a delicious anti-aging skincare routine from within. As a special bonus, Dr. Michael Greger will reveal how you can make your own skin treatment for pennies relative to commercially available products. This video will equip you with the knowledge to harness the power of nature's most potent anti-aging allies, vitamins A and C, and discover how Dr. Michael Greger can help you unlock the secret to a naturally radiant complexion. All trans retinoic acid, tritinoin, sold under a variety of brands including Retin-A, is a prescription-only topical form of vitamin A that can visibly improve mild to moderate photo damage, including fine and coarse wrinkles, freckles, other pigmentation, and improve overall skin texture after months of daily use. This is accompanied by a restoration of collagen formation, skin biopsy taken before and after 10 to 12 months of tritinoin versus placebo found that while skin collagen formation dropped 14% in the control group, it rose 80% in the retinoic acid group. What are the drawbacks of retinol? The downsides are the side effects. So common they have their own name, retinoid reaction, plaguing a high proportion of patients, including redness, stinging, burning, itching, and peeling. Uh, ironically, the constant irritation may be a causal mechanism, constantly forcing the skin to renew. The adverse effects do tend to improve over time, after a peak after about two weeks of daily use, and you can minimize the irritation by starting at a lower concentration, for example 0.025% instead of 0.1%, and slowly ramping up from applying at first twice a week for a few weeks, then to every other night for a few more weeks before finally advancing to nightly application as tolerated. Are there any alternatives? There are gentler, less potent over-the-counter topical retinoids, retinil, retinol, and retinal. There's retinal acetate, retinal palmitate, propionate, retinol, retinaldehyde. Once absorbed into your skin, your body can convert them into small amounts of retinoic acid. However, data is limited on these non-prescription retinoids. The results of clinical trials on the retinal esters have been routinely disappointing. Even 48 weeks of daily use was found to be ineffective for reducing wrinkles compared to placebo. Which are the most encouraging alternatives? Retinaldehyde and retinol, however, hold some promise. There was a 48-week head-to-head trial of retinaldehyde versus retinoic acid versus placebo. Uh, now, retinoids can be so irritating that it's hard to blind participants as to whether or not they're in the control group, so objective measures that may be less susceptible to placebo effects are especially important. So what they did is make silicone molds of the crow's feet wrinkles around the eyes of the participants before and after being randomized to one of those three groups, and then analyze scans of the molds using high-resolution digital image processing. The retinaldehyde group showed a similar reduction in fine lines and wrinkles as the retinoic acid group with less irritation. Only 23% of the retinaldehyde group experienced skin irritation, compared to 71% in the retinoic acid group versus 4% in the placebo cream group. 
Of all the non-prescription retinoid options, retinol may be the preferred choice, though. It causes even less irritation than retinaldehyde, insignificantly different than placebo, and a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial found that 52 weeks of use improved crow's feet fine lines by 44% and mottled pigmentation by 84%. Where does that leave us? But tretinoin, retinoic acid, has by far the most robust track record of efficacy, so why not just ask your doctor for a prescription? Because long-term topical tretinoin use may increase your risk of an even more stinging side effect, death. Topical tretinoin therapy in all-cause mortality. The Veterans Affairs Topical Tretinoin Chemo Prevention Trial was to be a six-year randomized controlled trial to see if it could help prevent skin cancer. But the trial had to be stopped early because significantly more people were dying in the retinoic acid group than the placebo cream group. At the time the study was halted, 19% of the subjects in the tretinoin group had died, compared to 14% in the placebo group. Between 1% to 8% of topically applied retinoic acid is absorbed into the bloodstream. Could it be killing people? Uh, we don't know if the increase in deaths was a statistical fluke that happened by chance, or a real biological effect. The probability that we'd see such a discrepancy just by chance is about mm, 1 in 100. Tretinoin continues to be banned in Europe for cosmetic purposes. What other vitamins might help rejuvenate skin? There is a reason why there's a long historical use of fruit purees as facial masks, and perhaps why Cleopatra was said to bathe in sour milk. Alpha-hydroxy acids, also known as fruit acids, are natural acids found in foods. They include citric acid from citrus, glycolic acid from sugarcane, lactic acid from fermented fruits, malic acid from a variety of fruits, and tartaric acid from grapes. High strength concentrations are used for chemical peels. Concentrations over 40% can only be used by medical doctors. Professionals in salons can give more mild peels with 10 to 40% acid solutions, but concentrations under 10% are sold over the counter as exfoliants. Are there any studies for vitamin C solutions? Alpha hydroxy acids are thought to work by weakening cell to cell bonds to hasten the shedding of dead cells off the skin surface. Three placebo-controlled studies of over-the-counter strengths have been published. The first compared an 8% glycolic acid lotion to an 8% lactic acid lotion to a placebo lotion. Applied daily on face and forearms for 22 weeks, both the acids work similarly, producing visible improvements in facial photo damage in more than 70% of the acid groups versus only 40% of the placebo group. All the participants were advised to wear protective clothing and regularly use sunscreen, which may explain the benefits even in the placebo group. Overall, forearm photo damage and sallowness also improved significantly in the acid versus placebo groups. About one in three participants experienced transient redness, but only one out of 74 left the study due to facial irritation. Any other research? The second trial found a 5% glycolic acid lotion for three months beat out placebo on lessening skin roughness and mottled discoloration on the face and neck, but failed to significantly reduce wrinkle scores. The irony of alpha hydroxy acids is that while they can help with past photo damage, they can make future damage worse by increasing skin photosensitivity. What can we do to protect ourselves? So taking precautions is recommended. The FDA recommends that all alpha hydroxy products be labeled with a prominent warning sunburn alert. This product may increase your skin sensitivity to the sun, and particularly the possibility of sunburn. Use a sunscreen, wear protective clothing, and limit sun exposure while using this product and for a week afterwards. How about other forms of AHA? What about ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C? If niacinamide works by turning into antioxidants, why not just apply antioxidants directly? Topical application can lead to vitamin E levels in the skin 10 times what is achieved by oral dosing, and vitamin C up to 40 times higher, at least in mouse and pig skin, respectively. According to a review on topical anti-aging skin care by a prominent Beverly Hills plastic surgeon, at a minimum, patients should be encouraged to use daily sunscreen, a topical retinoid every night, and a topical antioxidant daily. But there's only one antioxidant that's been clearly shown to work. Despite its ubiquity in skincare products, there is no evidence to support any role for topical vitamin E in skin aging, whether for wrinkles, discoloration, or texture. 
The one study on topical CoQ10 also failed to work significantly better than placebo. What vitamin C has worked, if any? But there is one type of vitamin C that has been shown to help. Skin biopsy studies show that the topical application of a 5% solution of L-ascorbic acid, also known as just ascorbic acid, the type of vitamin C found in food, significantly increases the expression of collagen in human skin compared to placebo, suggesting functional activity of the skin cells is not maximal in postmenopausal women and can be increased. A split-face study involving the application of three drops of a 10% L-ascorbic solution for three months found significant improvements over the placebo side of the face in fine and coarse wrinkles, sallowness, and skin tone, or firmness. Not knowing which side was which, 16 out of 19, 84% of patients correctly identified the vitamin C side as the one showing improvement. Unfortunately, L-ascorbic acid is unstable in creams, turning an unsightly brown when it oxidizes, limiting its shelf life. What does the skin care industry do? So instead, the skin care industry uses more stable vitamin C esters or derivatives, such as ascorbyl palmitate, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, ascorbic acid sulfate, ascorbyl stearate, etc. Unfortunately, there is no evidence that these compounds have comparable effects, likely because they're poorly absorbed and only minimally convert to the active form. The good news is that you can make your own. Please tell us, how do we make our own? The good news is that you can make your own. Although vitamin C concentration as low as 3% or 5% have been shown to have anti-wrinkle effects in split face or, or split neck and arm studies, 10% is recommended. The 10% solution used in this study retails for a ridiculous $127 per ounce. You can make a DIY solution more than 2,000 times cheaper simply by buying L-ascorbic acid in bulk and mixing 3 grams into 30 grams of water at a cost of about a nickel per ounce. You can mix it in an eyedropper and drip uh, 4 to 5 drops on the palm of your hand and use your fingertips to apply over your face, neck, and upper chest daily. Um, just be careful to not get any in your eyes. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.